joining us this week is Robert Schmitz. If you have not seen his YouTube channel, I highly suggest checking it out. The link will be in the description below. I'm so happy to be here. This is about the best moment we've had as Bears fans all season long. Like for once, it feels as if everybody's opinion on how the future can work out for Chicago feels like it's starting to meet in the middle where we're not bad enough for anybody to reasonably cheer for number one and number three anymore. We're not good enough for everybody to be sold and super duper toxic about like, this is the way going forward. And if you think anything else, you're silly, right? And now we're all on the same page. Let's just win some games, baby. And the bears catch a flagging Browns team at the perfect time with an untested quarterback that hasn't gotten heated up the way that the bears have been able to put teams in the pressure cooker. And man, I, j I know you were just saying, hi, how you doing? But the answer is I am stoked to see how this goes because the bears win this next Sunday. They could easily end up eight and eight and should fate align. Maybe that means that you get a win in your end game with green Bay in week 18. And there would be no more cinematic way to end this season. Yeah. It's unfortunate looking back on it, that right now the Bears should be, and could be seven and six, two games away that were very, not a game that we, uh, that other teams won, but really the bears lost. It's a shame because right now you are kind of in control and if you're anywhere near seven and six and on the way to like nine to 10 wins. I think this is an absurdly successful season comparatively to what me and Polly were really expecting. So even the last few weeks, I've just been rooting for wins. I have no interest in draft picks anymore and I'm just rooting for wins. That was my thing at the beginning of the year. I said, you know, I, I don't care so much about how sloppy this year is going to be. I want wins. This is what's important to me this year. I was willing to take a step back last year and sacrifice the wins for the draft pick. And, and you, everybody saw what that panned out to another potential first overall pick. So it was definitely worth doing last year. However, two years in a row, I don't feel comfortable sitting there rooting for my team to lose. The crazy part is that when we look back at our predictions, um, me and David both had them around seven wins. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in that seven wins, though, we had them winning two games in the first four weeks. So for this team to go 0-4 and, and still be in a position where they can not only get seven wins but more after starting 0-4 is actually a very, very positive end result here. What I've found frustrating about this season, and Dave, you kind of hinted at it, you gave me a springboard I wanted to just dive into, is that I would argue this team has been near best case scenario in terms of talent development. Darnell Wright is a year ahead of schedule. Braxton Jones seems like the real deal. A player who I'm not allowed to legally name because if at the moment I do, I'll jinx him, has been healthy all year, save his early IR stint. And he's been the best lineman on the Bears, which has been awesome. And that's just the offensive line. Like, that's before we talk about a defensive line where Andrew Billings is playing like Dexter Lawrence light. That's before we talk about Montez Sweat and the addition that he's meant. That's before we talk about Kyler Gordon's resurgence. Jalen Johnson stepped forward into a corner one. I mean, truly, a Bears fan with an Xbox couldn't build a team with this much talent on it. And yet they're five and eight. You are allowed to be very disappointed. I would argue that the way that this Bears schedule has worked out, you could tell me that this Bears team should be eight and five, and I would agree with you because that Buccaneers game was right there for the taking. And if you don't want to give them the Buccaneers game, how about the Saints game where they had four opportunities to tie the game and instead went 0 for 4 in critical situations? Everybody wants to focus on just Denver and just the Lions game. There were so many more opportunities that the Bears didn't capitalize on, and now, now they're just playing too well to lose. Like, at this stage, the defense is basically playing so well that to lose would just be a dang shame, right? It's a funny scenario to be looking at because I still think this team's record is seriously, seriously underperformant. I don't know where else to assign the blame on that than the head coaching, but the roster couldn't be in better shape. You know what I mean? 